On today's episode, a second chance for America's new moonlander, asteroid mining takes a giant leap forward, and how NASA's Sphere Telescope will map the universe. For the third time already this year, a new moonlander is being prepared for launch from the United States, and this one is by far the most ambitious payload yet in America's return to the moon. What we are looking at is another one of NASA's commercial lunar payload services, and for the second time, the company responsible for the landing hardware will be US-based Intuitive Machines with their Athena lander. A follow-up to last year's Odysseus, which famously became the first private spacecraft to soft land on the moon, even though it did immediately tip over afterwards. But we're hoping for a much better result with Athena, which is based on the same Nova C platform, and will be carrying some extremely high-value payloads with the potential to greatly advance lunar science. That includes a big drill, a small rover, an even smaller rover, and a rocket-powered drone. Athena is targeting a landing zone on the moon's South Pole region. More specifically, it's going to touch down on Mons Mouton, which roughly translates to Sheep Mountains, but is actually named after NASA mathematician Melba Mouton. It's one of the tallest mountains on the moon, it has a large flat top, and is part of the outer rim of the South Pole Aitken Basin. This is a location where NASA's Viper rover would have landed if it had not been cancelled. Speaking of landing, Intuitive Machines says that they've made a wide variety of changes to the Nova C landing platform to improve on last year's unfortunate result. CEO Steve Altemis claims that advancements in both software and hardware will result in 20 times greater landing precision on the company's second attempt. Moving on to the payloads, Athena has been equipped with the Trident Drill, which was developed for NASA by Honeybee Robotics. This was also originally intended for the cancelled Viper rover. Trident is going to be able to drill down as deep as one meter below the surface by using a rotary percussive method, basically a hammer drill. As the bit is retracted from the ground, it's going to pull up soil cuttings, which will then be analyzed by a mass spectrometer called M-Solo. This spectrometer will detect the chemical makeup of the soil cuttings, looking specifically for certain minerals and signs of water. Athena will also deploy a small rover to the moon. This is MAP. Developed by Lunar Outpost, it's a four-wheeled vehicle less than two feet in length and height, weighing in between 5 and 10 kilograms, with the ability to carry up to 15 kilograms of payload and move at a speed of 10 centimeters per second. This rover is equipped with a near-field depth camera. It's basically going to create a 3D scan of the lunar surface that can then be used to construct a perfectly accurate virtual reality environment of the moon for future astronauts to train in. Mons Mouton is one of the potential landing sites for the crew of Artemis 3, and riding on the back of the MAP rover will be a secondary micro-rover, the Astro Ant. Developed at MIT, Astro Ant is small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, and is designed to be used in swarms of multiple rovers that can be used for spacecraft diagnostics and repairs. The single unit test rover will drive around on the back of MAP using magnetic wheels and measure the temperature of its radiator from different positions, which will help with monitoring the performance of the bigger rover's thermal system. And then there's Micro Nova, a rocket-powered miniaturized version of the Athena lander created by Intuitive Machines that will function as a hopper. It's basically a two and a half foot cube with landing gear and a rocket engine. It can carry one kilogram of payload over a distance of more than 2.5 kilometers. Micro Nova is able to hop up to five times on one mission, and this will allow it to get into locations that would be too risky for the main lander to venture. For example, Intuitive Machines believes that Micro Nova can be the first vehicle to enter subsurface lava tubes on the moon. We know that Micro Nova will be hopping into the bottom of permanently shadowed craters, where it's believed that water ice will be found. While in flight, the hopper will use two high-resolution cameras to image the lunar surface. It's also equipped with a spectrometer for measuring subsurface hydrogen and a radiometer to measure surface temperature. Both the Micro Nova and the MAP will be communicating with the Athena lander using a mobile 4G LTE communication system provided by Nokia. Yes, they still exist and they're going to the moon. 
This will be the first time that a non-radio-based communication system will be used on the moon, which should enable command and control of vehicles from the Earth, and high-definition video streaming from the lunar surface. If that wasn't enough, the Athena lander will be riding to space with a companion payload, the Astro Forge Odin. This thing is not going to the moon, it's going much, much further out into space than that. Astro Forge is a California-based asteroid mining startup that was founded in 2022. The company's mission is to extract resources from asteroids and provide a sustainable solution for mining precious metals. This startup is not wasting any time. They launched a test payload called Brocker 1 in April 2023, and that was supposed to test a small-scale space-based refinery, but but that test failed to activate in low Earth orbit, so now they're jumping straight to a near-Earth asteroid. The target will be 2022 OB5. We know that the object is about 100 meters across and will be less than 2 million kilometers away from the Earth at the time that Odin makes its approach. We know that 2022 OB5 is not a typical S-class stony asteroid. It's believed to be an M-class metallic asteroid, by far the most valuable rocks in the solar system. But this will need to be confirmed when the spacecraft arrives. Odin won't be making direct contact with the asteroid. It will be photographing and scanning the rock to confirm its viability for future mining operations. The Odin spacecraft is a 100 kilogram microwave-sized CubeSat that Astroforge was able to build in about 10 months for a cost of just under $7 million. If successful, it would become the first private spacecraft to operate at a distance further than the moon. Odin will separate from the Falcon 9 upper stage carrying the Athena lander at about 45 minutes after launch, following the translunar injection burn, and it should reach the asteroid 301 days later. As ambitious as that plan already is, Astroforge is well on their way to dreaming even bigger. The company has already secured another rideshare launch for later this year, again hitching a ride with SpaceX and Intuitive Machines on a lunar landing mission. That launch will send the 200 kilogram Vestry probe to 22 OB5 as well. And then, using images and data collected by Odin, Vestry will land on the asteroid and begin the extraction and refining process of the minerals found there. Both the Intuitive Machines Athena Lander and the Astroforge Odin payloads are currently in Florida being integrated into the upper stage of a Falcon 9 rocket, set for launch as early as February 26th. Also launching later in February on a Falcon 9 rocket will be NASA's brand new space telescope, Sphere X. It doesn't actually look like a sphere, it's much more like a cone shape with a white shell on the outside. There are two more concentric cones beyond that, and in the middle is the telescope, which is technically known as the Spectrophotometer for the History of the Universe Epoch of Reionization and ICES Explorer. Much like the James Webb Space Telescope, Sphere is an infrared imager, but unlike the James Webb, which focuses on taking highly detailed images of specific regions of space, Sphere is taking a broader view of the entire visible universe, with the goal of creating the most detailed, full-spectrum sky map to date. Over the course of its two-year mission, Sphere X will map the celestial sky in both optical, or visible light, and infrared, which is more like seeing heat and radiation, capturing 102 infrared colors for the first time. The telescope will complete one full sky map every six months. Sphere will be placed into a sun-synchronous orbit around the Earth that will keep it out of direct sunlight and cool enough to study infrared radiation. That's helped by the three concentric conical photon shields that protect the main instrument. The telescope cost around $500 million to build, it weighs about 1,100 pounds, and consumes less power than a refrigerator. With the new instrument, scientists wish to learn about galaxies at various points in their histories to enhance our knowledge of galactic evolution, and they want to peer into the empty space between stars to see if there are any icy organics floating around, which could trace how life on Earth might have begun. 
Scientists also hope to capture three-dimensional views of hundreds of millions of galaxies to further our understanding of cosmic inflation, which is the belief that our universe expanded from a relatively small size at the moment of the Big Bang to an incredibly massive size only tiny fractions of a second later. We still don't know what drove inflation or why it happened. Sphere X can also help to improve the efficiency of the James Webb Space Telescope. By creating this infrared map of the entire visible sky, it helps to identify areas of interest that JWST can examine in higher details.